Yeah, that song gets me hyped. I don't even know what it is. Oh my gosh. All right, y'all. Hey, so I've been uh, really into like watching World War I and World War II movies. I'm not going to suggest that you watch it just because I shouldn't be doing that. Um, but during World War I, there was a famous German fighter pilot, and his name was, I'm going to get it wrong, Manfred von Richthofen. And uh, most people knew him by the name of the Red Baron. Um, he was famous for shooting down 80 enemy fighter pilots. And so he knew everything about flying. Like he was like the guy when it comes to, to, to shooting down these airplanes. And he, he ran a squadron of fighters. He trained them how to go into battle. He, um, he was just the guy that just knew everything about it. Like he was the man. That's why they call him the Red Baron. Actually, I'm not sure why they call him the Red Baron. Anyway... He, one day, the, the Red Baron, I'm going to call him that instead of whatever I just, his real name is, he was chasing after a Canadian fighter pilot, and he followed him so far into the enemy territory that he was shot down. And eyewitnesses say that he was flying so low for so long and was so mentally involved in this chase that he didn't even realize that he was in enemy territory. And which cost him his life. And so when we're talking about this series of what I kind of just introduced before, I believe us two get caught up in chasing after things, things of this world, the things that, that, that culture tells us we should be running after, that we don't even realize we're in enemy territory. And we become so focused on success, on fame, on pleasing people, on stuff, on things, on acceptance, on being seen, and that it costs so much of our souls that we can easily become defeated or shot down spiritually. And what I call this is the continual pursuit of more. Like you think that if I just get this one thing, I'll be satisfied. And then if that thing doesn't satisfy me, then I'm gonna get more of that thing. And then if that thing doesn't satisfy, I'm gonna get more and more of that thing and maybe something else. But that thing never really actually fulfilled me because it kept letting me down. And then where are you left? There's, a, there's a, a, a story in the Bible about a man named King Solomon. You may have heard of him. He was, a, he was the wisest man. And he once said, I have seen all things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless. A chasing after the wind. This phrase, chasing after the wind, is a metaphor to a pursuing pointless things. Pursuing things that have no significant value. And this man, this King Solomon had everything. God gave him everything. And he came to the conclusion that it was all meaningless. So this is the theme of this series, which I believe is so important. I don't want to, to necessarily call people out and say what you're chasing is never gonna make you happy because I do believe 100% that things do make us happy in life. That, that's been my life. I, I did chase after things and for so long it has made me happy for a moment. But if our only desire is to chase things in life that have no eternal value, and like that, that fighter pilot, if we're just focused on that one thing or those couple things, then we're doing it all wrong. See, we don't live for the moment. We say that. We li we're li just living for the moment. We're living for what's, what's best next. We're living for the moment. That's just not true because we live for a moment with an eternal perspective, eternal consequences, knowing that life here is short. So the prayer with this series is not only talk about uh, the specific things that we chase, but through that, maybe we'll find purpose and value by chasing after something, someone that's eternal, someone that's worth chasing after. And so today, we're gonna focus for the first week, we have five weeks of this, the first week we're gonna focus on chasing Fame, chasing fame. So what does it look like to be famous? Way back when, when, when 
if someone was famous, usually they did something really good for society or for humanity, like they did something great. Or they were like an artist or a really, really famous musician, something like that. And now we think of like TikTokers. I mean, they're pretty famous. They're more famous than a lot of people. They, we think of social media influencers, right? And there's nothing wrong with that at all. But, but it seems like it's just so much easier to become famous today. Am I right? All right. I mean, you could say I'm wrong. You absolutely can. But I really do believe that we see so many more famous people in this world by being social media influencers or TikTokers. And so you may not think you're pursuing fame because obviously if I'm up here talking about chasing fame, you think I'm talking at you that you're chasing fame. And you may not believe that you're pursuing that. But I go against that to say when we chase after what we call fame, it might sound a little bit different. It might sound like you want to be admired. You you want to be loved. You want to be accepted. You want to be looked up to. You want to be known. So now does the word fame ring a little bit true to you? And it looks different in our lives. And I know when when we say, you know, someone wants to be famous, we really miss the mark on playing that song famous. (laughs) today. Ah, sorry guys. Just came to me. Sorry. The easiest way that we see people wanting to be famous is like they're the life of the party. They just want to be noticed. They want to be on this stage. They're bossy because they want to show others that, that they're better than them. And it may not sound like most of you and you'll automatically just say this message isn't for me. But when we talk about fame, it could go also deeper than that. Like I know there are times in my life where I overcommit to things. And a lot of times people say, you're just a nice guy. But really, I want them to really like me. That's why. I overcommit to things, say yes things. I want people to like me. And that's a sign, I believe, of chasing fame, chasing that pursuit of being known or admired. And maybe for you, like you want credit for things. It's nice to do, to do things for people, but you're longing for like someone to just say thank you or say, this person did this for me and they did an incredible job. Or we don't like criticism. You know, like when people say, hey, maybe we can fix this because you don't want to be not liked by them. But I also want to say this. Fame isn't sinful. It's not wrong. Because like if you excel at what you do or you're the best of the best at that one thing, you may become what we call famous or known or we could say, you know, you are an expert, or, like I said, known in that, that, that specific thing or in that area of expertise. And that's Okay. Because listen, God made David famous. This is what it says in 1 Chronicles 14. So David did what God commanded, and they struck down the Philistine army all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. So David's fame spread everywhere. God made King Solomon famous. So he was the wisest man who ever lived, but he also gave him like people that wanted to be at his house parties. Like everybody knew who he was. Their pursuit, though, Listen, their pursuit wasn't fame, but to maximize the talents that God has given them, which is why they are able to use their platform to point to Jesus, to point to God, to who he is. And I would even go as far as to say that Jesus was famous. Whether people liked him or not, they knew of him. I mean, he did miracles. He, he, he spoke in a way that nobody else spoke, but he turned the world upside down. And that's how he was famous. Listen to Mark chapter 10, verse 45. This is really important. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. For Jesus, fame was to serve, was to serve others. Imagine that was our goal. Imagine that was our goal, that we served others unconditionally instead of chasing after us being known. And so like I said, fame necessarily isn't a sin, but rather the pursuit of fame, the pursuit of fame can be dangerous in our lives. So chasing fame, what, that, what happens is it turns our eyes away from God and from others and turns it back towards ourselves. And when we focus on ourselves, gosh, man, we fall. And when we do, we become discouraged, we become hopeless. And instead of trying to, to make ourselves famous, what, the, the, what Jesus is calling us to do is to make him famous. And so how do we do that? How do we take the eyes and the pressure off of us and make Jesus famous? 
The first thing is, we have to understand who we are and that we are ambassadors. We are ambassadors. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says this. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ since God is making his appeal through us. We plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So when it says ambassador, an ambassador, if you Google it, is a representative who is authorized to speak in a foreign land on behalf of the country by which he was sent. See, Paul is writing to the Corinthians, urging them to represent something bigger than themselves. And that's the finished work of Jesus. We constantly, listen, we constantly talk about our purpose in life. I say that because that's most of the conversation I have with students, and not just students, but adults too. Like, what is next for me? What, what am I here for? That is, a, that is a question that we've asked ourselves so many times. What we're gonna do in the future, who we're gonna end up with. I wanna take a little bit of pressure off you. Whatever you do, wherever you go, your purpose is to represent Jesus Christ to the world. Being, a, in, being an ambassador is is, is a significant role. We get the opportunity to carry out a message that's unlike any other message in this world, and that's the good news of Jesus Christ. But know this, how cool is it that God, the God who created the heavens and the earth, all the universe and everything in it, entrusts us with such an important role? To be an ambassador, like in politics or for a nation, you have to be qualified. You have to be trusted. The God of the universe entrusts us to be the ambassadors of him, to represent him. And so I want to read again what Claire read, the, just the first part of it in 1 Thessalonians 2, 4. For we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. You are approved by him who entrusts and empowers you to carry out his word to the world. Our role is not for us to be known by others, but for others to know Jesus. By the way that we live, people should see Jesus. By the way that we talk, by the way that we walk, by the way that we deal with situations, people should see more of him. By the way that people interact with us in private, people should see more of Jesus. And so then I ask you guys, who are you representing? And we can so quickly say it's Jesus. Yeah, that is the answer. But who are you really representing? I want you to re, like, like evaluate that the rest of tonight and when you go into breakout groups. Who are you representing? Is it yourself? Is it your needs and your wants? Or what, you, what, what you think is best for you? And the second question that I want to ask you is the second last part of this is, Whose approval matters most? I hear this all the time. Like, I don't care what they think about me. I don't care what they think. I'm still going to do what I want to do. And that sounds really nice on the surface. It's just like sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt. And that's just a lie because words are going to hurt us. Words are going to hurt us just like when we are always going to put into consideration what others think of us or what others think of what we're doing. I shouldn't care what they think but I do. Psychologists believe that a desire of fame is rooted in emotional injury or neglect. If you are craving to be noticed or to be known or to be admired, to be loved, chances are at some point that you have felt insignificant. And all I can say is that's probably most of us, Right? Because we constantly hear these words in our lives that say, you need to be better, you need to make something of yourself, you need to prove yourself, you need to look like this, you need to speak like this, you need to sing like this. But what we need to know is that that's also coming from hurt, that's also coming from a sinful nature. And psychologists also tell you that chances are pretty high, and this may relate to you, that perhaps you have parents that are very difficult to live up to their expectations, difficult to please, or you were rejected by friends at some point, or you were overlooked in life. And so then there's this longing in your soul to be known or to be noticed. And when we spend our lives on others' approval, when we do that, it gets exhausting. And we say things like, do you like me? Do you recognize me? Do you accept me? And we constantly look for the approval of other people. 
We may get to a place where we fear rejection or are sensitive to criticism because we're more concerned with someone else's approval than the Father's own love for you. I want to read what the second part of 1 Thessalonians 2, 4 says. Our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. I want to make this clear. To please God is not to work our way up for his love or to do things more or better so that he loves us. To please God is to be faithful to him. When we chase after the approvals of others just so that we can be liked, we are going to run out of steam because that's a chase that we'll never catch up to. God sent his son to die on a cross not so that we can prove ourselves to him or to anybody else or be the greatest. He died because we aren't so great. And so we don't have to chase after that because, listen, he's chasing after you. You don't have to please this world. Gosh, you will grow tired if you try to please everybody. He's calling you to the opposite of that, to just be faithful to the one who is faithful to you. We're not called to be famous. We are called to be faithful. When we stand before God in heaven, he'll not say, well done, my good and famous star. He's gonna say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And listen to that, how that connects. My good and faithful servant. The one thing that Jesus came to earth for, to serve others. He's the perfect example of what we are called to be our purpose. To not be famous, but to serve and to love others, to wash the hands and feet of others. And so I ask again, who are you representing and whose approval matters most? You're called to something greater than making your name known. And and, and we chase after being accepted so much, but he accepts you, all of you. He accepts your hurt. He accepts your past. He, 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 He accepts your struggle your temptations, he accepts that. We want others, we want to be known by others, but guess what, he knows you. We, we want to be elevated in this world, but he elevates you. He does this so that we can live a life that shows his glory and who Jesus is. So when people see us, they see Jesus. So I'm gonna close with this um, really important guy in the Bible, his name is John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a man uh, who was related to Jesus. Some of you may have heard he's like rugged. He like lived down in the mountains and ate locusts and stuff. And seven years before his birth, uh, before Jesus' birth, there was a prophet and he, in the summary, said this, there will be a man who will prepare the way for the Lord. That was him. John the Baptist was the man who was preparing the way for Jesus. And he began his ministry by telling everyone about the coming Messiah and, and people believed and they confessed and their sins, they confessed their sins and they were baptized in the Jordan River by John all over the region. And so he grew a following. So people started to follow him all over the place. He had a platform. Today, if you compared it to our context, if there was a stage, he'd be speaking up here. He'd be telling you about Jesus. Or he'd be singing on this stage. He had disciples. His fame grew rapidly. But what did he do with this fame? In John chapter three, verse 22 to 30, I'm not gonna read it word for word. But at this time, Jesus was just beginning his ministry and he started baptizing people also, okay? So Jesus was also starting to baptize as John was baptizing people. And so Jesus started to take center stage, if you will, right? John's disciples were concerned because people were going to Jesus to get baptized, not John the Baptist. I mean, he's like literally in his name, you know? And they would say, hey, like this Jesus guy is taking over your ministry and your voice and your fame. Now listen to John's response here. No one can receive anything unless it has been given to him from heaven. You see, John knew that the role that he played, John knew his role that he played in ministry. He was content with what God had given him and confessed that his role to his disciples by telling them, I am not the Messiah, but I'm sent ahead of him to make his name known. And lastly, John said these words, I pray that we can preach to ourselves every chance that we get. 
in John 3.30, he must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. You see, John was simply just an opening act for Jesus. His job was to point and to glorify the name of Jesus. And guess what? He was content with that. If that's all he had to do the rest of his life, he was content with that. We're just pointing to the one who loved him, pointing to the one who served him. Are we content? That's a good question. Are we content with just being ambassadors for Jesus, for representing him in a world that tells us we need to make a name for ourselves and represent ourselves alone? Are we content with being ambassadors and representing him? Less of me, more of him. Less of me, more of him. Just paving a way for Jesus. Less of me, more of him. Less of me, more of him. Less attention to me, more glory to him. Less about my name, more about his name. Less about follow me and more about follow him. When everything in culture now says to be famous or be known or be liked, less of me and more of him. Are we able to say that? Be encouraged, you are known by someone far superior than anyone else in this world. He loves you, he cares for you, no matter who you are. He makes a way for you so that you can live a life of freedom. Of what? Free from constantly chasing after things that just don't last. Are you tired of chasing? Are you tired of chasing after things that won't last? Are you tired of chasing to be known? There's an answer, and it's Jesus, because he knows you, and he knows all of you. Run to him, and he will give you rest. My whole life was a chase. And so I don't want you to get to a point where you just run out of steam and you hit a wall, because that's what happened to me. Everything that I ever wondered, everything I believed was right in this world, I chased after, and it wasn't Jesus. It was parties, it was, it was alcohol, it was popularity, it was, it was friendships. Everything that I thought will last in my life, everything I thought will give me joy, didn't give me joy, might have given me happiness in the moment, but it left me with regrets the next day. And so I, what, I connect to this message so much and, and want to talk to you about this because I don't want you to get to a point where you have nowhere else to run to. We are all chasing after something. But that something, most likely, is something that's not gonna last. So let's chase after the one who will last forever and ever. And again, it's a better chase because he loves you and he knows you. Eternally, he wants to be with you. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for the way that you love us. Thank you for giving us that promise. Thank you for being on your throne. 